Describing data. Once we have collected data from surveys or experiments, we need to summarize and present the data in a way that will be meaningful to the reader. We will begin with graphical presentations of data, then explore numerical summaries of data. Presenting categorical data graphically. Categorical or qualitative data are pieces of information that allow us to classify the objects under investigation into various categories. We usually begin working with categorical data by summarizing the data into a frequency table. Frequency table. A frequency table is a table with two columns. One column lists the categories and another for frequencies with which items in the categories occur. How many items fit into each category? Example one. An insurance company determines vehicle insurance premiums based on known risk factors. If a person is considered a higher risk, their premiums will be higher. One potential factor is the color of your car. Their insurance company believes that people with some color cars are more likely to get in accidents. To research this, they examine police reports for recent total loss collisions. The data is summarized in the frequency table below. Sometimes we need an even more intuitive way of displaying data. This is where charts and graphs come in. There are many, many ways of displaying data graphically, but we will concentrate on one very useful type of graph called a bar graph. In this section, we will work with bar graphs that display categorical data. The next section will be devoted to bar graphs that display quantitative data. Bar graph. A bar graph is a graph that displays a bar for each category with the length of each bar indicating the frequency of that category. To construct a bar graph, we need to draw a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. The vertical direction will have a scale and measure the frequency of each category. The horizontal axis has no scale in this instance. The construction of a bar chart is most easily described by the use of an example. Example 2. Using our car data from above, note the highest frequency is 52, so our vertical axis needs to go from 0 to 52, but we might as well use 0 to 55 so that we can put a hash mark every 5 units. Notice that the height of each bar is determined by the frequency of corresponding color. The horizontal grid lines are a nice touch, but not necessary. In practice, you will find it useful to draw bar graphs using graph paper, so the grid lines will already be in place or using technology. Instead of grid lines, we might also list the frequencies at the top of each bar like this. In this case, our chart might benefit from being reordered from largest to smallest frequency values. This arrangement can make it easier to compare similar values in the chart, even without grid lines. When we arrange the categories in decreasing frequency order like this, it is called a Pareto chart. Pareto chart. A Pareto chart is a bar graph ordered from highest to lowest frequency. To show relative sizes, it is common to use a pie chart. Pie chart. A pie chart is a circle with wedges cut of varying sizes marked out like slices of pie or pizza. The relative slices of the wedges correspond to the relative frequencies of the categories. Pie charts look nice, but are harder to draw by hand than bar charts since to draw them accurately, we would need to compute the angle each wedge cuts out of the circle, then measure the angle with a protractor. Computers are much better suited to drawing pie charts. Common software programs like Microsoft Word or Excel, OpenOffice.org, Write, or Calc or Google Docs are able to create bar graphs, pie charts, and other graph types. There are also numerous online tools that can create graphs. Don't get fancy with graphs. People sometimes add features to graphs that don't help to convey their information. For example, three-dimensional bar charts like the ones shown below are usually not as effective as their two-dimensional counterparts. Here is another way that fanciness can lead to trouble. Instead of plain bars, it's tempting to substitute meaningful images. This type of graph is called a pictogram. Pictogram. A pictogram is a statistical graph in which the size of the picture is intended to represent the frequencies or the size of the values being represented. Numerical summaries of data. It is often desirable to use a few numbers to summarize a distribution. 
One important aspect of a distribution is where its center is located. Measures of central tendency are discussed first. A second aspect of a distribution is how spread out it is. In other words, how much the data in the distribution vary from one another. The second section describes measures of variability. Measures of central tendency. Let's begin by trying to find the most typical value of a data set. Note that we just use the word typical, although in many cases you might think of using the word average. We need to be careful with the word average as it means different things to different people in different contexts. One of the most common uses of the word average is what mathematicians and statisticians call the arithmetic mean, or just plain old mean for short. Arithmetic mean sounds rather fancy, but you have likely calculated a mean many times without realizing it. The mean is what most people think of when they use the word average, mean. The mean of a set of data is the sum of data values divided by the number of values. Example 14, Marcy's exam scores for her last math class were 79, 86, 82, 94. The mean of these values would be 79 plus 86 plus 82 plus 84 divided by 4 equals 85.25. Typically, we round means to one more decimal place than the original data had. In this case, we would round 85.25 to 85.3. Example 15, the number of touchdown TD passes thrown by each of the 31 teams in the National Football League in the 2000 season are shown below. Adding these values, we get 634 total TDs. Dividing by 31, the number of data values, we get 634 divided by 31 equals 20.4516. It would be appropriate to round this to 20.5. It would be most correct for us to report that the mean number of touchdown passes thrown in the NFL in the 2000 season was 20.5 passes, but it is not uncommon to see the more casual word average used in the place of mean. Example 16. The 100 families in a particular neighborhood are asked their annual household income to the nearest $5,000. The results are summarized in a frequency table below. Calculating the mean by hand could get tricky if we try to type in all 100 values. We could calculate this more easily by noticing that adding 15 to itself six times is the same as 15 multiplied by six equals 90. Using this simplification, we get 3,390 divided by 100 equals 33.9. The mean household income of our sample is $33.9,000. Example 17. Extending off the last example, suppose a new family moves into the neighborhood example that has a household income of $5 million. Adding this to our sample, our mean is now 8,390 divided by 101 equals 83.069. While $83.1,000 is the correct mean household income, it no longer represents a typical value. Imagine the data values on a seesaw or a balance scale. The mean is the value that keeps the data in balance, like in the picture below. If we graph our household data, the $5 million data value is so far out to the right that the mean has to adjust up to keep things in balance. For this reason, when working with data that have outliers, values far outside the primary grouping, it is common to use a different measure of center, the median. Median. The median of a set of data is the value in the middle when the data is in order. To find the median, begin by listing the data in order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. If the number of data values in is odd, then the median is the middle data value. This value can be found by rounding n divided by 2 up to the next whole number. If the number of data values is even, there is no one middle value. So we find the mean of two middle values. Values n divided by 2 and n divided by 2 plus 1. Example 18. Returning to the football touchdown data, we would start by listing the data in order. Luckily, it was already in decreasing order, so we can work with it without needing to reorder it first. 
Since there are 31 data values, an odd number, the median, will be the middle number. The 16th data value, 31 divided by 2 equals 15 and a half. Round up to 16, leaving 15 values below and 15 above. The 16th data value is 20, so the median number of touchdown passes is the 2000 season was 20 passes. Notice that for this data, the median is fairly close to the mean we calculated earlier, 20.5. In addition to the mean and the median, there is one other common measurement of the typical value of data set, the mode, mode. The mode is the element of data set that occurs most frequently. The mode is fairly useless with data like weights or heights, where there are a large number of possible values. The mode is most commonly used for categorical data for which median and mean cannot be computed. Example 22. In our vehicle color survey, we collected the data. For this data, green is the mode since it is the data value that occurred most frequently. It is possible for a data set to have more than one mode if several categories have the same frequency or no modes if each every category only occurs once. Measures of variation. Consider these three sets of quiz scores. All three of these sets of data have a mean of five and median of five. Yet the sets of scores are clearly quite different. In section A, everyone had the same score. In section B, half the class got no points and the other half got a perfect score. Assuming this was a 10 point quiz. Section C was not as consistent as Section A, but not as widely varied as Section B. In addition to the mean and median, which are measures of typical or middle value, we also need a measure of how spread out or varied each data set is. There are several ways to measure this spread of data. The first is the simplest and called the range. Range. The range is the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value of the data set. Standard deviation. The standard deviation is a measure of variation based on measuring how far each data value deviates or is different from the mean. A few important characteristics. Standard deviation is always positive. Standard deviation will be zero if all the data values are equal and will get larger as the data spreads out. Standard deviation has the same units as the original data. Standard deviation, like the mean, can be highly influenced by outliers. To compute standard deviation, one, find the deviation of each data from the mean. In other words, subtract the mean from the data value. Two, square each deviation. Three, add the squared deviations. Four, divide by n, the number of data values, if the data represents a whole population. Divide by n minus one, if the data is from a sample. And five, Compute the square root of the result. Where standard deviation is a measure of variation based on the mean, quartiles are based on the median. A quartile. Quartiles are values that divide the data in quarters. The first quartile, Q sub one, is the value so that 25% of the data values are below it. The third quartile, Q sub three, is the value so that 75% of the data values are below it. You may have guessed that the second quartile is the same as the median since the median is the value so that 50% of the data values are below it. This divides the data into quarters. 25% of the data is between the minimum and Q sub 1. 25% is between Q sub 1 and the median. 25% is between the median and Q sub 3. And 25% is between Q sub 3 and the maximum value. While quartiles are not a one number summary of variation like standard deviation, the quartiles are used with the median, minimum, and maximum values to form a five number summary of the data. Five number summary. The five number summary takes this form. Minimum, Q sub one, median, Q sub three, maximum. 
To find the first quartile, we need to find the data value so that 25% of the data is below it. If n is the number of data values, we compute a locator by finding 25% of n. If this locator is a decimal value, we round up and find the data value in that position. If the locator is a whole number, we find the mean of the data value in that position and the next data value. This is the identical to the process we use to find the median, except we use 25% of the data values rather than half the data values as the locator. To find the first quartile, Q sub 1, begin by ordering the data from smallest to largest. Compute the locator. L equals 0.25 n. If L is a decimal value, round up to L plus. Use the data value in the L plus position. If L is a whole number, find the mean of the data values in the Lth and the L plus oneth positions. To find the third quartile, Q sub 3, use the same procedure for Q sub 1, but with the locator L equals 0.75n. And lastly, <laughs> box plot. <laughs> A box plot is a graphical representation of a five number summary. To create a box plot, a number line is first drawn. A box is drawn from the first quartile to the third quartile and the line is drawn through the box at the median. Whiskers are extended out to the minimum and maximum value.